Hello and welcome along to this edition of Tea and Chat for May. My name is Jess and I work at Devizes Library um, and I am the new kid on the block so welcome but be gentle it's my first time. I thought I'd start by asking what you're reading at the moment and I thought I'd share with you a couple of books that I have just been reading, just finished and really enjoyed. The first of which is a non-fiction book um, called Clanlands by Sam Hewen and Graham McTavish and I'm going to flash it up just there. It's got a subtitle called uh, Whiskey Warfare and a Scottish Adventure Like No Other and it's written by two actors from the TV series Outlander which is based on a series of books by Diana Gabaldon which you might have heard of. The first one is called Cross Stitch. And basically, it's their adventure as they explore the highlands of Scotland, visit whisky distilleries, castles and locations where they filmed the TV series. Um, and what I really liked about this book, I must admit, I'm not a big whisky fan, but what I really liked about this book was the camaraderie between the two guys as they ride, paddle and travel by minivan across Scotland. Um, Sam Hewen admits that he has a great childish delight and obsession with tormenting Graham and Graham as the, the wizened, bearded, slightly balding chap uh, does play up to the old guy sort of persona and so there, there's a great camaraderie between them. So I would recommend this one um, if you're interested in the history of Scotland, if you're interested in whiskey, if you just like um, I don't know, a Scottish adventure written by two chaps who've been exploring their heritage. This is the book for you. That's Clanlands by Sam Hewen and Graham McTavish. The second book I've been reading is completely different. This is science fiction. Now, don't make that face at me. Uh, I used to look after a book group and every year I would encourage them to read one science fiction book as, as part of our reading group every year. And every year they would make faces at me and they would moan. And every year it always gave the best discussions. And there were a lot of them going, actually, Jess, you were right. It was a really good book. So um, I'm going to recommend this book. It's called Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. And it is the third one that Andy Weir has written. The first one you might know, it's called Martian and made into a film with Matt Damon a couple of um, years ago. Uh, I would thoroughly recommend The Martian too. Brilliant book. Um, and it, this is similar, Project Hail Mary. Um, the main character is a chap called Ryland Grace and he is the sole survivor on a desperate last chance mission. Um, and if he fails, uh, fails humanity and the earth itself, everything will, will perish. Um, except he doesn't know that, he can't remember anything, he can't even remember his own name. All he knows is he's been asleep for a very, very long time. And as his memory returns, it's up to him to solve the impossible task and literally save the world. So, um, like I say, these are just a couple of books that I've been enjoying the last couple of weeks. Uh, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, and the other one was Clanlands by Sam Hewen and Graham McTavish. So that's the chat part over and done with of today's tea and chat. Um, a little bit of tea. Are we ready? Very nice. And uh, I thought we'd move on to a little bit of poetry. Now, I like to say that I have a theme for the poems for this afternoon, but as I was going through, I realised um, it wasn't really a theme. So we've got some poems on um, birds, some um, poems on flowers. I've got a tea bag poem which I really really like and I'm a massive cat fan so there will be a couple of cat poems in there as well. Anyway I hope you enjoy. The first one is uh, by Gerald Manley Hopkins and it's called Repeat That, Repeat. Repeat that, repeat, cuckoo bird and open ear wells, heart springs delightfully sweet. With a ballad, with a ballad, a rebound oft trundled timbers and scoops of the hillside ground. Hollow, hollow, hollow ground. The whole landscape flushes on a sudden at a sound. So that was repeat that, repeat, and don't worry, I'm not going to, but that was written by Gerald Manley Hopkins. The second of my poems is what could be described as the gardener's curse. It's all about dandelions. Now there is something very cheerful, isn't there, about the lovely bright yellow of the dandelion as it appears in spring. 
but then it's not quite so nice as that lovely sort of uh, seed head uh, spreads its lovely seeds on the wind and then before you know it one dandelion becomes 5,000 but anyway this is a, a poem written by Walt Whitman and in rehearsal that was quite a hard thing to say I've managed to get my teeth in and get it out but this is called The First Dandelion by Walt Whitman Simple and fresh and fair from winter's clothes emerging, as if no artifice of fashion, business, politics has ever been. Forth from its sunny nook of sheltered grass, innocent golden calms the dawn. The spring's first dandelion shows its trustful face. Isn't that lovely? Short but sweet. Uh, and it does remind me that as, uh, when I finish work today, I will have to be going into the garden and do something about the many, many, many dandelions. We're staying with the plant theme with the next one, written by Hartley Coleridge, and this is called The Lily of the Valley. Now, lilies of the valley are my favourite, uh, my mother-in-law's favourite flower. She loves their tiny little white flowers and the delicate scent you get. However, I didn't realise they're they're quite poisonous apparently. I've got a couple in my garden, but um, yeah, I need to handle with care. So this is Hartley Coleridge and the Lily of the Valley. Some flowers there are that rear their heads on high, the gorgeous products of a burning sky, that rush upon the eye with garish bloom and make the senses drunk with high perfume. No such art thou, sweet Lily of the Vale, so lovely, small, and delicately pale, we might believe, if such fond faith were ours, as sees humanity in trees and flowers. That thou wert once a maiden meek and good, that pined away beneath her native wood for fear of her own loveliness, and died of love she would never confess. The Lily of the Valley by Hartley Coleridge. Still sticking with plants for the next one, we have the wonderful Christina Rossetti coming up next, and this is called Golden Glories, celebrating all the wonderful wildflowers that we have in this country. Buttercups, marigolds, daisies, golden uh, cowslips, and all sorts of lovely yellow flowers. The buttercup is like a golden cup. The marigold is like a golden frill. The daisy with a golden eye looks up and golden spreads the flag beside the rill and gay and golden nods the daffodil. The gorsy common swells a golden sea. The cowslip hangs a head of golden tips and golden drips the honey which the bee sucks from sweet hearts of flowers and stores and sips. Talking of sips, hang on just a second. Mm, delicious. Our next um, poem is uh, moving on to my indulgence. Please do bear with me. Um, I've got a lovely poem called Cats Sleep Anywhere by Eleanor Fargian and I can attest that cats sleeping, uh, I have two of my own and they really will sleep absolutely anywhere. Um, anyway, Cats Sleep Anywhere by Eleanor Fargian. Cats Sleep Anywhere any table, any chair, top of piano, window ledge, in the middle, on the edge, open drawer, empty shoe, anybody's lap will do, fitted in a cardboard box, in the cupboard, with your frocks, anywhere, they don't care, cats sleep anywhere. What I would say is that uh, one of my cats only my lap will do because I am his favourite uh, but perhaps not all cats are quite like my cats. Now I have a lovely comment from Pete which is very very sweet um, that he likes the sound of clan lounge, um but obviously because he likes the, um, the the no hair because Graham McTavish is very famous for not having hair. Uh, you didn't might not have been able to see it from the cover but uh, clearly uh, that was a recommendation that Pete enjoyed. I don't know if you can see, see that the fact that the chap on the right has no hair. <laughs> Anyway, back to the poems. That was, as I say, Cat Sleep Anywhere by Eleanor Fargian. My next poem 
is coming it's not actually a poem at all it's an extract from um one of shakespeare's plays love's labor's lost and it's from act five scene two and i do expect you to check to make sure i'm telling the truth it's simply called spring and actually before i start this one i will say i am going to read a little bit of shakespeare a little bit later on and if you have shakespeare a complete shakespeare around the house i'm going to have a go at trying to do it from memory so no reading just just telling you so when i was very young my dad um bet me i think it was like 50p or something that i couldn't learn a sonnet off by heart so uh thanks to him this one is firmly stuck in my noggin uh so if you wanted to look out your uh, your shakespeare works to test to see if i've got it right word for word it's i think it's sonnet number 20 three so um well we'll have a have a go a little bit later on in the meantime though this is spring from love's labors lost act five scene two when daisies pied and violets blue and lady smocks all silver white and cuckoo buds of yellow who do paint the meadows with delight the cuckoo then on every tree mocks married men for thus sings he cuckoo Cuckoo, cuckoo, oh, word of fear, unpleasing to a married ear. When shepherds pipe on oaten straws, and merry larks are ploughmen's clocks, when turtles tread and rooks and doors, and maidens bleach their summer smocks, the cuckoo then on every tree mocks married men, for thus sings he, cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo oh word of fear unpleasing to a married ear so again that was from love's labour's lost and is called spring by william shakespeare my next poem is uh, one of my indulgence so we're talking about cats again and uh they're a clever bunch these cat folk this particular one is uh by lord byron's cat if you can believe it um and it is a variation of she walks in beauty by uh, Lord Byron, uh, but this time it's called She Walks in Booties. Mm. Anyway, I just need a quick slurp of tea before I start, but She Walks in Booties by Lord Byron's Cat. She walks in booties like a sprite with pixie feet and fairy toes. Her paws on ice will ne'er alight, nor feel the chill of frigid snows and all the rays of winter light shine on her collar's satin bows. And from her soft enchanted fur exudes the sweet scent of shampoo, and precious oils distilled from myrrh that give her hair a magic hue. I long to hear her charming purr and share the music of her mew. But as I watch her take the air, my spellbound vision starts to fade. I feel at once a dark despair. My feline heart is sore dismayed. For not content to make her fair, her doting owners had her spayed. So that was She Walks in Booties uh, by Lord Byron's Cat, believe it or not. Now I did promise you uh, that I would attempt to try and remember, always always a, a, a terrible thing on uh, uh, on live TV, live TV, on Facebook anyway, live, that I would try and remember one of William Shakespeare's sonnets. So I will do my best. I think it's either number 23 or 24, but the first line is, mine eye hath played the painter. And if you have your Shakespeare, uh, complete Shakespeare with you, then you can let me know perhaps in the chat if I get it right word for word. Anyway. Mine eye hath played the painter, and hath stelled thy beauty's form in table of my heart. My body is the frame wherein tis held, and perspective, for it is best painter's art. For through the painter you must see his skill to find where your true pictured image lies, which in my bosom shop is hanging still, with windows glazed with thine eyes. Now thou see what good eyes for eyes hath done, Mine eyes hath drawn thy shape, and thine to me are windows to my breast, where through the sun delights to peep, to gaze therein on thee. But eyes this cunning want to grace their art. They draw but what they see, and know not the heart. I'm not sure if I had them all quite right, 
but I think more or less, perhaps you'll let me know. That was, I think, either sonnet number 23 or sonnet number 24, written by William Shakespeare. We are very nearly at the end, certainly of this cup of tea, and of this week's tea and chat, but I've got time to sneak in one more cat poem. Hooray, I hear you cry. This one is written by William Blake's cat, which um, instead of call, instead of being called Tiger Tiger, is called Mongrel Mongrel. Uh, and you'll probably guess which William Blake poem this one is based on. Mongrel, mongrel, barking blight, bane upon my yard at night. What infernal hand or eye could frame thy vile anatomy? In what stagnant sump or pool steeped the slobber of thy drool? What the wrath dare, de dare he incur? What the hand dare weave thy fur? Who the crackpot, who the nut, would make such an ugly mutt? And when thy heart began to tick, what weird hand withheld the brick? Where's the crank who loosed the chain? From what peapod came thy brain? What warped artist shaped thy face, whose foul crime the canine race? Now you might have spotted this is about a dog and not a cat. I'm just testing you. When the cats give up, the cats are coming, don't worry. When the cats gave up their prowls and cowered from the hellhound's howls, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the flea make thee? Mongrel, mongrel, barking blight, bane upon my yard at night, what infernal hand or eye could frame thy vile anatomy? You might have recognised that as something slightly more famous, but uh, that was the mongrel by um, William Blake's cat. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this week's, uh, this sorry, this month's tea and chat with me, Jess Phillips, on Devizes Library. Uh, on our Facebook page. Next month Tea and Chat will be with Basil on the Trowbridge Facebook page on the 14th of June at three o'clock and he will be featuring some of Thomas Hardy's wonderful poems so be sure to tune in then. In the meantime I hope you keep reading, keep well, keep drinking tea uh, and thank you for listening and I hope to see you again in a few months time. Okay bye bye. <laughs>